the top, he climbed the ladder of success, investing in them trailers, he was bound to impress, started off with nothing, just a dream in his mind, but he had that fire burning, couldn't be confined, he saw potential in the mobile homes, a hidden treasure, flipped them like a pro, turned them into a real estate. Hello and welcome everybody, Jose J. Garcia, real estate investor, coach, and mentor. So I got a whole new series, a whole new documentary for y'all, okay? You might be wondering what's up with the car. This is going to be Mobile Home Confessions. Now it's going to be raw footage, not edited, and we're going to have star guests coming in here with us on board, but it's going to be real true Mobile Home Investor Confessions. Now, I've been investing in mobile homes for well over seven years. I've done over 500 transactions. I've coached over 300 different people in counting, and I've done just about everything you can and added invented two strategies with mobile home investing. And I mean, guys, we do rentals, flips, we wholesale, we move them. Beautiful thing about mobile homes is they're mobile, so they can be moved. We wholesale mobile home parks. We've done extended stays in mobile homes. We've done Airbnbs, Section 8s, veteran assistance, elderly housing, and we're still growing. So you think we may know a little bit about mobile, mobile home investing. Look, I love it. It's a beautiful industry. It's a beautiful niche. It's definitely the hidden side to real estate a lot of people are still not aware of. So, But in there, there's pros, there's cons, there's good and bad. You know, a lot of people like to brag about so much good, and there is. I love it. I would not trade it for anything else. But there's a lot of behind the scenes you do not know. You're going to find out now. So let's get started. Mobile home uh, investor confessions in cars. So why cars, by the way? You know, I love one of them, mobile homes, assets, and I like cars, liabilities. But I make my mobile home assets pay for my liabilities. That's what you got to do is you got to create an asset that pays for the liabilities, and you're going to have fun. I have no worries I was going to get paid, so that's why, okay? But I love cars. You know, early on as a child, I always liked little Hot Wheels, the little cars, you know, and I always envisioned, I'm going to have one of these. I want one of those. I don't want the car toy. I want the real thing. So now as an adult, I get to play with the same type of toys, only in real life. So <laughs> so that's what we're doing, what we're doing. But it, look, this is raw footage, confessions, it's not edited. We are going to share details. And like I said, I'm going to have some park operators come away with me, some managers, some investors, and they're going to share their insights. Some of these things that they deal with, how they how they overcome them how do they keep going every day that's a question i get sometimes from some of these investors who've been in the game for a few months a year it's like jay how do you keep going with some of this issues and problems it's like look you can't see everything is an opportunity everything is an opportunity we do and those things when when you fail that's where you learn from you know so i, I don't reject failure i just learn from it and don't do it again but uh let's jump in so uh, i'm about to pull up and get a coffee also uh which I've been told I order the coffee wrong every time, uh, but I order it anyway, and it gets me the coffee, so we're going to be pulling up on the drive-thru as well, but all right, so let's just jump into some of the things you don't do, okay? Let, let's start with that. Some of the things you don't do as a mobile home investor, pull up to somebody's mobile home, whether it's a tenant, a lease option, it doesn't matter. A mobile home you own, you just pulled up, up to it, they're not going to come to the door. Uh, that's the that's guarantee. You're going to hear the TVs go off. Lights may go off. Depends on one time. Definitely don't show up at night. You don't want to do that. But uh, <laughs> text them. Call them. What's the reason for you showing up anyway? Well, what is it that you need? So, you know, hey, uh, Joe, I'm pulling up. I'm picking up the rent maybe. Whatever. You know, then they'll come to the door. Okay? So, definitely don't just pull up on something like that. Um, Don't show up on Saturday mornings. Sunday mornings. Okay? our clientele likes to sleep in so showing up on a saturday morning and i know this from when i was a landlord when i was a landlord i was a one-man team i was not just a landlord who also who owned the mobile homes i was the guy who was fixing them maintenance repairs whatever that was me all me but of course you know trying to be productive proactive i would say well i'm going to get out there saturday morning early then i can knock this out whatever the issue may be we'll fix it then i have the rest of the day to myself that never worked it never worked because they like to sleep until around noon. It's about, a, I would say, a safe cushion for you to show up um, both days. And, you know, it's a ghost town. If you are trying to do a documentary, some reviews, maybe just see the community without really having any, any interruptions, you know, of, of the tenants, the residents, whatever, show up to any mobile home community around 8, 9, 10 in the morning. Nobody's awake. Nobody's up doing anything. So it's a safe cushion, okay? So that's another thing. Um... 
things about residents, tenants, and you know, this varies of course, but the, you know, one thing for sure, it's like, you know, pets are expensive. Pets, you have to take them to the vet, and then they get sick, or this, or that, or they're growing, or it just depends on what you got. Every tenant I've ever had, every tenant, every resident, buyer, whatever they may be, I've ever had, all have pets. And I'm not talking about, oh, they got a little kitty or, oh, look, they got a little aquarium and two little fishies or whatever it may be. No, some of these have 10 cats, five dogs, and they live inside the mobile home, okay? So it's that's another thing. It's like if I am coming over, hey, it's uh, so-and-so pet put away so I don't get bit and that sort of thing. So, But, I mean, you, you got cats, you got dogs, you got little, little pigs, you, you got everything. Bear with me guys, I gotta order my coffee. It's my first coffee of the day, so you know I'm draining a little low on energy, but we're good, we're active, so let's keep going until they take my order. So anyway, pets are definitely a thing that you you gotta kinda keep up with mine on that, as well as everybody has pets, so dogs and that sort of thing. So, um, grossest thing I've ever, grossest call I've ever gotten. I remember like it was yesterday. It was probably my seventh mobile uh, home I had invested. Bear with me. Yes, yes, good afternoon. Let me do a venti Americano. Hot rice. Hot. Make it the uh, half decaf. Half decaf? Yes, and give me a cup of water as well. The water, what size? Uh, just whatever size you got. All right. Black Americano, half half venti, and a water be close to seven. Thank you. Thank you. You see, I ordered it wrong. I know I did. You know, I always get, that's not how you're supposed to order it. You're supposed to say uh, half decaf, venti, whatever. Well, it gets my coffee. That's all I care. But they did mess up one time. I said half decaf. Why don't I get half decaf? Is because uh, I don't need caffeine. You don't need caffeine. But, you know, a little bit of caffeine is not going to hurt anyone. So I say half decaf. I won't get the jitters, whatever. But uh, once upon a time, and I drink it black, by the way. The adult way of drinking coffee is drinking black coffee. You don't need sugar or cream and Splenda and Blender and whatever all people put on their coffees. Uh, but one time they put the half and half, which is like a milk. It looked like dirty mud water. Uh, not drinking that. <laughs> so that, that one didn't pay off, okay? I had to go back and get the right coffee. But grossest call I've ever gotten. Oh, man. Wow. You know, and it's being part of. As a landlord, when you're doing your maintenance, is definitely something to keep in mind that you're gonna get, you know, tenants don't call you to say, hey, how are you doing? Hey, you just checking in on you. They call you when there's always a problem. So when the phone rings, if you're the maintenance guy, that's a problem, it's an issue. How big or how small, yet to be obviously determined. But, um, so what ended up happening was, it was a family and they had a few kids one of the kids decided to flush Batman down the toilet. So Batman didn't make it through the pipe, but he did made it about halfway down the pipe until it plugged. And then of course, once the plug, then you keep flushing and then you have tissue, whatever, okay? So what ended up happening was they kept trying to flush it, okay? And it kind of would flush, not flush, but you know, they waited a little too long to call me, is what happened. When they called me, it was a problem. So, okay, oh, hey, Jay, we got a major issue. We are flushing our, we're trying to flush our toilets and uh, it, it's coming back. It's backing back into the uh, back into the house. It started by backing up in the sinks, backing up in the, in, in the uh, tubs, but they kept on trying to flush it. You, you, you saw a problem and you kept trying to flush it, so it just kept coming back up problem with that was that at this point it was literally human waste that was coming back up when I got to this home they were outside and I don't blame them okay they were outside the mobile home waiting on me it's like yeah it's a mess in there I walked one step and I got hit with reality stop being a maintenance man stop being a, you know cheap I'm gonna call myself that stop being cheap we were making good profits out of that I should have had a maintenance team by that point um, but yeah, I put a step. I mean when I say residue, I, I'm talking there was a layer of water and human crap on the floors. I don't do crap. I don't do bathrooms. I don't clean Ugh. So that would have to be definitely the grossest, but I'm not done yet. Okay, I'm about to pay for my coffee coffee latte here Pull out some Benjamins 
because I can't use my app. My phone is being used, so that's okay. Let's see what we got. Um, I hired a maintenance guy who came very well recommended. He ended up being a handyman and a contractor later on for me because I had to hire him. After what I saw he did, he had to be hired. There's no doubt of that. I mean, he he needed a bonus, a certificate, and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, I call him up over there and I say, hey, look, we got to get this fixed with these people. It's a mess. I mean, this guy, I don't think he could smell. There's no way. He got in the home, walked around. I'm thinking, okay. Is what is, right? He goes in there, and he comes out and says, uh, yeah, there's something in the pipe that's plugged. Obviously, the main line is plugged, and uh, nothing is going to go through. No, 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 I'm good. Put the rest right there. Thank you. Thank um, you. <laughs> so, I'm watching what he's doing, because I'm always trying to learn. Show me a little bit, even though I'm not going to get involved into this. It's like, I, you know, I want to learn enough to where if I guess this happens, at least I know how to tell another handyman or whatever. So, um, he takes the skirting aside from the mobile homes. Mobile homes have skirting, which is the bottom section too, when it goes past the mobile home. Um, he takes that off. He knew exactly where to look, the main drain. So, he gets under there, and when I, when I say he took it apart, it was like a human crap waste explosion it had so much pressure i mean thank god i didn't get uh, covered in this but he did and when i say i don't think he smelled he could smell i think he lost that scent maybe he done so many of these at this time already um uh, he was covered in this crap he comes out of there, and I'm thinking, yep, he, he's going to say he's done. He ain't doing this. He, this is not what he signed up for. He says, it's no problem. It's just a small little issue. I'm going to have to glue back the pipe once I clean it out, and we should be no problem. I, I'm in disbelief. This is happening. This is the stuff you don't see on TV. They don't record this stuff. If I could go back, I would have recorded the whole scene. Uh, after I vomited, of course, uh, seeing him standing there in front of me, trying to handshake me, by the way. That's not happening. All respect, we save that handshake for later. He got it done. He pulled that little toy out of there. It was full of tissue. It looked like paper towels, tampons. Little, this is raw. I told you this was going to be raw. Tampons and tissues, and I'm, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't handle it. I to just, I'm looking. I'm thinking, you know, looking, thinking back now. It's like, why did I stick around past that? Once he said he could fix that, I should have left, but I stuck around. Um... He showed me the toy. It was a Batman. Batman survived. I don't know if he was played with again, but uh, we fixed that issue. That would definitely be the the, the, the grossest, the nastiest that I can think. And I've had other calls, but it's just human waste. Bathrooms. God. No, we're not going to do that. So, yep. Got my coffee. You know, I didn't even check if they did my coffee correctly. They typically do. Yes. All black coffee. I'll show you. My wife hates this. She's got to put creamer, sugar, salt. You can't see it's black, but it's steamy good. Why did I get a cup of water? Because it's so hot. It's a good thing. I'm not complaining. I got to pour a little bit of water in there to lighten it up even a little bit more. That's what I do. Let's keep going. All right. I'm going to do one more. Things that, uh, other things that, uh, at uh, communities. So mobile homes that we invest in are in communities. Mobile homes, they're not called trailer parks anymore. Nobody really calls that anymore. You know, that, that was back in the scene with Eminem, 8 Mile, that was, you know, hey, let's go to the trailer park. Hey, let's get drugs. Hey, let's, uh, and I'm not taking away. You know, mobile home parks, there's some very, very, very nice communities. And then there is some, what I would still consider, go ahead and call it a trailer park. That is where you go get your, your your meth, your crystal, your cocaine, your Mary J, your blueberries. I don't know. Don't get no ideas. Don't go try to find them. I've had tenants. I'll talk to you about that here in a second. Okay. But uh, they are also, because there's rules, there's regulations, and how to keep the communities nice and presentable is don't have junk everywhere. A lot of these tenants like to hoard. They hoarder things that they save objects in the yard for later. You know, I would say they're thinking ahead. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it that way. Is these people they're thinking ahead. That's what they're doing. It's you know, um, they pull the transmission out of their Honda Accord because it didn't work, and they set it on their front lawn. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna leave it there for two years, for when maybe they have another Honda Accord, 
who that has a bad engine and then they'll just do one combination somehow I don't, I don't know logistics to that i'm not an engineer but that, that's what they do they'll save that tires that are dry rotted they, they don't work on a car anymore they'll, they'll save them out there for later use maybe they use them as a garden fill them up with dirt grow tomatoes i don't know stuff like that trampolines poles you know you name it all this kind of stuff and a lot of this stuff sometimes most times is broken so it's like get rid of it but they don't they just continue to hold on to it for me maybe they're i'll tell you what it is there's an emotional connection yeah so it wouldn't be nice that's what we're doing selling drugs out of my mobile homes my mobile homes have been used as grocery stores convenience stores kind of similar to they've sold food out of it they sold telephone cards out of it you know uh the hispanic community they uh they, they used they don't do it as much anymore they used to have like the minute phones or whatever and uh when they would call overseas there's like no long distance whatever was the interruption there but they could buy these cards that you could upload and you could talk for like an hour for like ten dollars i don't know whatever but apparently it's a booming business or it was where they would go and buy hundreds of these things and then they would sell them for more they would mark them up but it'd be convenient because hey maria at the one of those stress mobile home she's selling cards so they can just go at night whenever and she bump up the price and she had a business going no llc needed either i mean that's what you're talking about that's that's golden business there all cash flow <laughs> i want to stop in a minute um drugs i've had drugs i've had i've had what it looks like a drive through i mean I, I mean these people are geniuses they would they would walk by through the front front of the and we caught them doing it they would walk through the front the dealer was sitting in the front rocking back and forth just reading the newspaper right and they would walk by hey uh you you got any uh you got any s you got any twos they had codes for this crap and uh and the dealer would say yes yes for sure and then they would go around the mobile home towards the back where now the other dealer the partner the i guess the staff uh they had the whole setup back there and they would give them up and collect the funds and they keep flowing it was like a little circle and we just sit there and watch them like there you go there you go you know, for a slight second, I thought, you know, maybe joint, joint venture, joint, we, we need a joint. Let's see how much they're making a month, a week. Then we can joint venture and come up to something like that. And you know, I'm kidding. I, I'm completely joking on that. Not at all. We just needed real proof. And we got them out of there. Eviction. We didn't even need to do an eviction because we basically gave them the ultimatum. Look, we know what you're doing. Uh, I, I don't even want to know how much you're making. But the reality is that I, I dial a nine one one and you're gone so we can do eviction or we can call them or how do you want to go about it next day gone that's the fastest vacancy i've ever had that's for sure but i hope you enjoy these shows these episodes these series i can sit here and talk all day about it i mean i'm i'm getting started i've shared nothing you, you're gonna hear some stories oh my goodness stories Yes, stolen mobile homes, demolished mobile homes. Hey, let's hire a crew to come and demo a mobile home, they said. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. They, they, they'll demo it, they'll carry it out, and you can just bring another one. Only the demo company accidentally demos the neighbor's mobile home. Oh, we got stories. Well, we got stories for you. So I got my coffee. I mean, I'm enjoying my Dodge Challenger. It's been around since 1970. I got the 2023 SRT. I don't know what that means. I don't know what none of that means. Okay, so we're going to have every episode, different location, different car, different uh, investor. We're going to have a different investor with us. The first two episodes is probably going to be me because I want to share some insights of some of this here. So, and look, this is to be fun. This is to be raw. This is to be real. You might hear bleep from time to time, you know, obviously. So that's it. that just comes with it. We may go out in communities. We may go out and talk to some of these residents, whatever. So you, you're in for a treat on these. Join us on these episodes. Uh, we got uh, a full season of them. We're going to be posting them unedited. That's what it's about. So.